PLA welding part two, tips and tricks, products explained, how to smooth it out and finish your piece. You asked for it, I got it, we're doing it now, let's go. What's up everyone? Thanks for tuning in. Darkwing Dad here bringing you a uh, part two, a kind of on the fly video. I had a couple people ask um, about finishing techniques on the PLA welding. Um, I got a lot of positive feedback from it, um, but I just had a bunch of questions and I'm like, hey, I got to work on the Vader helmet anyways. Why not make a video on it, right? So basically in this video, I'm going to give you a couple more tips and tricks um, when you're doing your PLA welding. Um, a couple things that I forgot from the first video. Didn't mean to, just kind of slipped my mind, but uh, I'll add those in. And then what we're going to do is basically break down what products you should use and the process you should be using to smooth it all out. Um, I'll get a little geeky, kind of explain some of these products and why you should or shouldn't use them. Um, but overall, at the end of this video, it'll give you all the information, all the knowledge you need to make your pieces look like they were never multiple pieces at all. Most importantly, it's done right. We're going to use the products in the proper uh, proper steps. Uh, that way you're not going to have body filler cracking or things lifting or splitting or it's really a, a video that's definitely going to help you guys um, whether you're a newbie or uh, you've done this before and you're just looking to critique uh, the way you do this. Um, this really is the proper way to do it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is get the Vader helmet going here. I'm gonna get out of the sweatshop of the shed and move to the garage, uh, get the Vader hel helmet uh, set up here and get things going, so check it out. All right, so really the first thing we wanna do when we get into um, fixing this uh, area that we've plastic welded is we, we wanna sand it, okay? And the reason why we wanna sand it not only on the outside here, uh, but also on the inside is one, uh, when we took uh, that soldering iron and we ran it along this seam here uh, it kind of created a little bit of a channel so there's a little bit of a ridge I don't know how well you can see it but and we have to do that because we have to push that soldering iron in there to you know the PLA is like this and we want to kind of push it in like that so it creates it fuses it together it creates that bond but then we've got this little channel here. And then what essentially what we're going to do is put that plastic metal over that to fill it in. But we want to sand that down because if this sits higher, you know, you if you just glob this over and then sand it, it, it could actually create kind of like a little arch, which we don't want. We want all this to be seamless. So what we have to do is kind of sand all this down and kind of smooth it out. There's a couple things that you want to kind of look for in the print before you get into sanding too much is do we have any areas where there are grooves or dips or definition or eccentricity of the helmet that we don't want to sand too hard? And we do. We have a couple spots. So one in here, we have this ridge within the helmet. So that is going to be something that more than likely what we're gonna have to do is, it's gonna look worse before it's gonna look better. We're gonna have to sand this all in, okay? And as we fill it, we're gonna lose that line. But then what we're gonna have to do is kind of take sandpaper and reform that line. So you never wanna just take filler and throw it over and then just kind of leave it. You can, we can see that we have this arch here that goes all the way around the helmet. So we're gonna have to reform that line. So don't freak out. It's something that, you know, with, with some skill and, and a little bit of ingenuity, we can re, we can reform that line. So what I'm going to start with here is I'm going to start with just some 180 grit. It's really up to you. You can do big pieces. You can do small pieces. Um, there's two very important things you want to remember uh, when you're sanding this, though. We want to try to knock this down and get all of this area prepped for, for the filler because the filler is going to sit on the edge of this just a little bit and then it's going to actually fit in the channel so what we want to do is we do kind of want to scuff that little channel that way when you put the filler on there it has something to grab to if this is smooth it could in theory reject the filler from grabbing and abrading to the surface so what i like to do is just take some 180 and just try to get it in the crack just a little bit just kind of scuff it up which is kind of scuff that channel there. And then you can go ahead and kind of start sanding your helmet 
all the way up. And really all I'm gonna do is just kind of sand this just by hand, just to scuff it and kind of smooth it out. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna sand this whole area up here and I'm gonna do it with 180. I'm gonna use uh, 220 and then 320 just for good measure, just to get this nice and smooth because we want just a little bit, um, probably about up to an inch on each side where we're gonna actually put that plastic metal and then we'll have to come back through and sand that. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of this helmet here just for demonstration, get this all nice and sanded and smooth and then show you um, how to apply the plastic metal. Uh, we'll sand that down and we'll talk about the, uh, the components and everything and why plastic metal really is the best option for something like this. Okay, so this is basically uh, what your piece um, should look like here get back a little bit um, just generally scuffed up we don't need it completely smooth that's that's not the goal here um, and I actually skipped out on doing the 320 because that's not really going to be necessary for this step the 220 actually made it really smooth we still want um, the surface a little bit chopped up okay because when a surface is completely smooth and you put something on top of it there's always that chance it can reject it if it's too slick it won't grab okay and that's why i kind of mentioned this inner channel this inner channel we went over with the you know the soldering iron and it made this whole channel here sm smooth and finished so to speak so what we want to do is we want to scuff it up if you've ever done any sort of you know like repainting or, or anything that deals with putting a filler or a paint or something on top of it, you you always want the surface a little bit scuffed because essentially what you're doing is you're kind of giving the surface little fingers or a little bit of grab. And that's always good. You're opening up the surface. So that way, when you put, whether it be primer or if you're putting on you know a polyester resin or a filler what's happening is instead of the surface being completely smooth it has these little tiny little pores that you've kind of put that's why i say fingers so what happens is when you put um you know that that resin that filler whatever on not only does it sit on the surface it goes in these little holes so it's almost like it's giving it roots so it can grab on so that's very very important when you're doing work like this you don't need it completely smooth. You want a little bit of grit there. And if you hear, hear how this is actually rougher? That's good. That's got, it's got those little fingers then to grab. It's that, that filler will be able to go into those little craters that we've created with the sandpaper and fill in and give it roots so it grabs on. So that's why I say, you know, if you ever try to put any sort of filler, any sort of primer on this without sanding it, you're gonna you're you're gonna fall into some issues, okay? So that's the whole reasoning behind why we want to uh, sand this and um, have that little bit of grittiness on there. Now, what you want to do is after you have it sanded to your liking and it looks pretty good, uh, what we want to do is wipe it down with some isopropyl alcohol. The reason why is me touching this, the oils from my hands are going to get on here. Uh, if oils get trapped in here, again, it can reject how the filler is actually grabbing and bonding to the surface. So I'm going to go grab uh, a towel and wipe this down with some isopropyl alcohol real quick. All right, give you a bird's eye view here um, just to give you a better look. Um, but like I said, basically all you're going to really need to use is a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol. Um, you don't have to use anything crazy. I'm actually using um, like a Noxzema pad. You can use a microfiber, a towel, anything like that. The biggest thing is just don't touch the side that you're putting the alcohol on because you don't want to get oil on it. You may say this is a little bit OCD. However, this will remove any oils. It is also going to remove any dust because we don't want dust on any part. So just kind of wipe that down. Actually, you can actually see, look at all the dirt it pulled off. So that could have been from my hands, that could have been from the sandpaper, that could have been anything. So getting that off is again, very essential for the bonding process. Now it'll take about 30 seconds here to dry. So we have a fresh tube, get it out here. Of plastic metal uh, this is not like body filler or anything um, it doesn't have 
a hardener. It just hardens once it's exposed to oxygen. So this does have a shelf life is what I'm getting at. So once you open this and you pierce the top, um, you'll notice, I should, I guess I should have done that. When you open it, there is a, it's sealed with metal and you have to pierce it with this. So that's what I was doing there. So once you pierce that and open it, um, its shelf life has began. What we're going to do though, is you just want to put uh, a little bit on your spreader here. And this is just a Bondo brand spreader. You can get these at Walmart or Lowe's or pretty much anywhere. But what we want to do is we just want to apply the plastic metal to try to fill that little seam in. And like I said, you don't have to mix anything. You don't have to worry about any hardeners. This is basically a two-in-one pre-mixed ready to go. What I like to do is kind of apply it a little bit heavy and make sure we are filling in the areas that we need to and then I'll come through and kind of scrape off what I don't need. You've got a little bit of play time with this. It's not a ton, but um, you do have some time to play. And I'll kind of scrape off the excess. And really what we want to focus on is filling in that little channel. Now we may have to repeat this process after we sand, but typically this is all you're gonna use the plastic metal for because it's filling in this heavy channel, this heavy crater that we've created, okay? Body fillers are great, um, but this, like I said, this is a lot more durable. You will notice that when this hardens, it is way harder to sand than typical body filler because your average body filler is basically just a, a polyester uh, based filler. It's a plastic filler basically is essentially what happens. So, um, you know, it's a lot more porous. It's not as durable. This actually has metal in it, um, broke down to a very, very, very fine grain it's almost like a fine sand, so to speak. It has more reinforcement in it. Uh, it's just made to be more durable. It doesn't shrink as much either. I will cover that while this is drying, um, but this is a lot, lot more durable, and that's why I like putting this on first. Then if you have very, very minor imperfections, you can go over it with just a standard body filler, and that's essentially what we're gonna do. But this is made for if you have deeper imperfections, heavy cracks, separation, could you use just standard body filler with this? Yes, but again, I'll explain that in the next slide here, why this is actually better to use. But really, once you have it like this, of course, we're gonna have to do some sanding. What we wanna do is we wanna let this sit for about an hour. Um, that's really the only drawback to this. It dries fast, it's completely dry. However, it can take up to an hour to cure. Now it depends on your, your atmosphere. If you have more humidity like me, it can take up to an hour. Um, if you're more of a dry climate, um, it, it may dry faster. If you go to sand this and you notice it clumping, just stop immediately and let it dry. So what we'll do is we'll just let this dry here uh, and cure for about 45 to 60 minutes. Um, and what we'll do is we'll actually talk a little bit of the difference between just your standard uh, Bondo brand body filler and plastic metal. Basically what makes them different, uh, but why when you use them both in conjunction with each other, they can really benefit one another. Um, I'll touch on glazing putty just a tad here because we are going to use this in this whole build. So we'll the, let this dry. We'll talk about some plastic fillers here and then we'll come back and get this sanded down and show you the rest of the process. All right, so while the uh, Vader helmet dries there, um, I'm going to touch on uh, some of the products. I uh, basically said I was going to kind of break down. I'm not going to get too scientific, but I'm going to give you a little bit of insight on uh, these products and why you should use them and why you shouldn't give you a, a couple analogies of, of basically how they work and how they harden and everything. One thing I want to start off with is proper terminology. So when someone asks you, hey, how did you get that helmet so smooth? What'd you use? 
Stop saying Bondo. Bondo is not the product. Bondo is the brand. If you look on all of this stuff, Bondo is the company that makes it. By saying Bondo, don't take any offense to this. It makes you sound uneducated, okay? Bondo makes various tools in the automotive industry. They make primers. They make paints. They make spreaders. They make sandpaper. They are actually owned by 3M, which is a major automotive corporation. So they make all kinds of things, fiberglass resins, chop mats, kitty hair. I mean, they have such a wide variety of things just it's nuts what they have so much i know it's kind of habit but bondo is the brand it's not the product okay so what i'm going to do is kind of break those down here um, starting with the plastic metal so as i stated you know in the last video i like to use plastic metal um and there's multiple reasons for that okay now some people might jump right into using a body filler okay um, over a plastic metal, but I'm going to kind of explain both of these at the same time and why you should and why you shouldn't. Okay. So the major difference between these two is body filler is actually a polyester resin, whereas plastic metal is actually a vinyl reinforced resin. Okay. It's not a straight vinyl resin. It doesn't require a hardener, whereas polyester resin does. So when you get your body filler, it's got this cream hardener with it, okay? So it is, it needs this. It will not work without this. Whereas the plastic metal, it basically contains solvents and other additives that when exposed to oxygen, it begins the curing process. So oxygen is the catalyst. That's what causes it to cure. It has all the components in here in soluble form, but when oxygen is introduced, it basically dissipates those solvents and it stays hard behind. Believe it or not, this actually has aluminum in it. It has very, very fine ground up aluminum, um, and that's why it really is so hard. Um, so that's a big reason why I start with plastic metal is just its durability, and it's just, it's going to cure harder. Now, the biggest reason I do plastic metal over body filler is polyester shrinks more than a vinyl reinforced resin, okay? Now, if you look up epoxy resins and things like that you'll notice they do have a higher shrink rate however this isn't like a typical vinyl resin and again i don't want to get too geeky but all i can say is this has a lower shrink rate than body filler if you've ever used body filler and you've worked on it and then you've come back to it and you've noticed that there's a crack or a seam there's a major reason for that one basically body filler just kind of sits on the surface it doesn't abrade to it whereas plastic metal will also there's that shrinking factor so this will shrink and you may not notice it right away um, the reality is all sorts of fillers shrink to a certain degree um, but out of the three that i use your body filler is actually going to shrink the most so understand that that is why i start with plastic metal is one because it's a lot stronger. Um, it's a completely different setup. So basically starting with the plastic metal, uh, I mentioned it in, um, in the last video and basically said, uh, you know, I like to start with it and there's a number of reasons. Um, the biggest thing is, and I kind of have to compare these at the same time, is most people will start when they have big gaps or deep gaps or things like that. They start with either a body filler or they start with plastic metal. Most people start with body filler because they think that's the way to go, but it's really not. Um, there's a big difference between these two. Body filler, it's a polyester resin that is, it needs, it, it is, it relies on this hardener. Without this hardener, it will never get hard. It will simply just dry out. Whereas the plastic metal, um, it is actually a, it's, it's kind of a blend. Um, it, it's a vinyl reinforced resin um, that has actually bits of aluminum in it. Like I had mentioned, it has um, shards of metal. Um, all right, so as I stated in the last video, um, I always like to start off with, after I've welded everything together, I like to start off with plastic metal. Um, a lot of people, when there's dips, craters, uh, deep defects that they want to fill in, they often go for body filler. And these two products are great, but I'm going to explain why I use them in, in the way that I use them, okay? So starting with body filler, which is what most people use, it's not a bad option. If you use it properly, it can be a very essential source to your finishing process. However, most people don't realize what it's actually doing. So this is a polyester resin and it is reliant on this cream hardener. Without this hardener, this activator, 
it will never solidify and completely harden. It can dry out, but it's still not going to be hard. It's just going to be kind of like a mushy marshmallow kind of thing. I don't know. Um, the plastic metal is completely different, okay? This is a polyester resin, okay? This is not a polyester resin, okay? This basically is a vinyl reinforced resin with copolymers that just works completely different. Basically, when you crack this open, it has certain solvents and certain components within it that when O2 is introduced, it will start the curing process. It doesn't need an activator. It doesn't need anything else. It will simply just get hard, okay? So it's very important with this that you want to keep this in a cool area once the top is open and you have a shelf life on this. This could harden in the tube. It's happened to me. If you leave it for a couple months in a garage or something, you'll come back and try to open it. It'll all be rock hard. So this stuff does have a shelf life. So that's a big major reason between um, these two, why you want to start with this. Another reason why is this actually is, it's more durable, also has bits of aluminum in it, believe it or not. So durability wise, this is going to be way, 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 way harder. Okay. Um, another reason why is whenever you use anything with a hardener, it is going to shrink. Now, polyester resins as themselves are known to have a higher shrink rate. Okay. So that's one big thing with these two. If you've ever used body filler, and you've used it on like a crack or a seam, um, it's not very flexible, okay? It, it's very brittle and it cracks, and that could be due to putting it on too thick. But a lot of the times it cracks before you even know because it's actually shrinking. It can actually take up to three days for body filler to fully cure. So you really shouldn't put it on very thick. Um, it's just like painting. If you put paint on super thick and it might feel dry at the top, but it's not dry underneath. So you touch it, you get a fingerprint. It's really the same idea. This is only meant for very, very light defects. Um, you know, something like this, you can go deeper with it and it's perfectly fine. Now you want to be careful because this stuff still can take up to two days to fully cure, but because it does have those bits of aluminum and it's set up completely different, it does harden quicker and it hardens faster and it is more durable. So that's why I always start with this. You gotta kind of think of it like building the house. You wanna start with a solid foundation. This is gonna be a much more solid foundation. Now, you can always look up certain MSDS and things online. Unfortunately, because they're trade secrets, 3M and Bono doesn't give out everything that's in these, but you can always look at these data sheets side by side to really see what's included in them. Um, like I said, I have a background with these, so I understand what's in them and how they work, but if you really wanna geek out, it's public knowledge, so you can go online and just type in, you know, plastic metal MSDS, uh, Bondo body filler MSDS, and you can actually see side by side why these products are so, um, you know, so different, you know. They're both great products. You just always want to start with plastic metal because it is giving you that solid foundation. It's more durable. Uh, it's going to abrade to the finish. Um, it's not going to shift and move and crack and bend and shrink as much. So definitely, that's why I recommend starting with um, plastic metal. But after you get your plastic mellow smoothed out, a lot of times you're gonna have little dips and craters and things like that, and that's when you wanna use your body filler. So body filler, like I said, it definitely serves its purpose. You definitely want to use it in this process, and it absolutely will give you fantastic results when used properly. Now getting into the last bit of the component, the last two components here, uh, we have glazing putty. So I'll get into doing analogies. So something like plastic metal is kind of like blacktop, so to speak. It's kept in a soluble form, and then when you pour it out, it, it hardens. It doesn't really need anything, so to speak. It's just like, um, it's kind of a mixture of things that when they dry out and harden, they self-cure, okay? They don't need an activator. Um, body filler would kind of be more like concrete, but maybe not as hard, because plastic metal is as hard as concrete, but the analogy where concrete needs water because it needs to be in soluble form and then when the water kind of dissipates it's left over it's it's tough but you kind of get where i'm going like this is more like blacktop you know concrete needs water to be mixed in so you can spread it and um glazing putty would kind of be like paint it's pre-mixed and it's very similar to um to plastic metal where everything is already mixed in here it doesn't need a hardener um it doesn't need anything it's actually believe it or not Glazing putty is a lot of natural elements of the earth. It actually has magnesium and limestone in it. So, and it has a couple other proprietary blends in it. So it's kind of like a little bit of a mixture of both of these together in a lighter form. Now this isn't polyester, so it's made completely different, like I said, but the glazing putty, like I said, it's more made of like a, a proprietary blend of certain components uh, of the earth, just natural elements. Like I said, 
uh, talcum, limestone, magnesium. Um, it does have other additives in it that basically make it to that, that putty version. But if you've ever used this stuff, it, I mean, it just, it, it sands off so easy, so smooth. And that's how you can really tell it's, it's like those elements of the earth. So this does have similar additives and solvents as these, um, just on a lower level, because this stuff, when you sand it, it just flakes right off and you'll see it in the video. But again, this is a very, very important thing that you need because this is going to be for your deep defects. This is going to be for your moderate defects. And this is going to be for your very, very little uh, defects, things like you know, pinholes and very little hair. I don't want to say hairline cracks, but just like sanding marks, things like that. Um, that's going to help fill all those in. And then each of these are going to use different grits of sandpaper with, and I'll explain that in the video. And then the last thing is the boom. Filler primer is absolutely great. It is an essential step, but, um, you know, you really shouldn't just be loading it on there. Um, it's something that, you know, you really want to use it at least a glazing putty to fill most of those defects in um, and then put this on because like I said if you load this stuff on um, too heavy too hard um, you're just gonna you, you could be opening Pandora's box and you, you know it could get mushy and you might put it on too thick and not let it dry quick enough and then when you put paint on there it starts frying and cracking so um, when you use this process it's pretty much bulletproof you know you'll see in the video when I start applying this stuff it's not I'm not caking it on super heavy. Your main goal is to fill in just the defect. You don't need to glob it on and layer it all over the place. You're not icing a cake. You know what I mean? You just want to reduce the defects. The sanding really should be um, a top priority. You want to sand down as much as you can, and then you want to use different components like this based on how, you know, how bad your PLA lines are and things like that to help fill those in and smooth them out. And like I said, with each step, you're going to gradually go up um, with your, your grit of sandpaper. You never want to keep it at the same grit because you want all of those fillers to kind of build up. Um, so that's pretty much it. That's pretty much my process. I didn't want to get too in-depth, uh, scientific and geeky wise. Um, I know I might've thrown some words out there that some people might not be familiar with, um, you know, things like catalyst and solvent, but it, Truly what this is, it's just simply chemistry and physics. That's all it is. So when you understand um, how to do this the right way, you'll just become more efficient at um, you know, completing your projects and, and doing things. And you won't waste time and you won't, won't waste money. And that's always good because then you'll have more money to buy things like PLA or another printer and you'll have more time to work on projects. So I really recommend this process. Um, hopefully this little explanation kind of gave you a little bit of insight of why I'm doing it this way. Um, but realistically, if you want on any automotive form and things like that, this really is the, the proper way to do it. You start with that strong foundation and you slowly, you know, teeter up to the lightest of the light, which would be, like I said, finishing off with, finishing off with a, uh, a filler primer. So that's pretty much it. That's my little explanation, um, for the, uh, the products that I use, uh, made by Bondo. What we're going to do now is we're going to go check in on the Vader helmet see how it's looking and start getting some sanding and getting that guy smoothed out. So one thing I didn't uh, touch on with the uh, PLA welding that I want to uh, just uh, make note of real quick is uh, temperature. I, I never touched on temperature and I'm, I'm very sorry I forgot that. Um, typically, if you are PLA welding, um, PLA, <laughs> Um, you want to keep your temperature somewhere around the 325 to 340 degrees. That's pretty much fine. I mean, you can go hotter, but I, I don't really think I usually leave, leave it in the low 300s and it's perfectly fine. If you're using PLA plus requires a little bit more temperature. So somewhere in that 360 degree range to 380. Uh, and if you're using uh, PETG or ABS, you definitely want to use somewhere around 400. Um, it does take a little bit longer. Like I said, you can go ahead and um, and crank it up to its top temperature. I don't really think it's necessary uh, for PLA and PLA+. Plus. Um, the thing is, if you get it too hot and it kind of slips, you, you know, you can very easily, you know, mess it up. Um, I do keep mine in the higher 300s, though, um, just because I'm just used to doing it. And once you get comfortable doing it, you'll get comfortable with your temperatures. But uh, somebody did ask on temperature on that, so I did want to um, make that known. And there was another... Uh, thing I didn't mention about it is you can also just kind of smooth out um, the PLA with different tips. So let me show you that real quick. All right. So this is just a little trick here. If you were working on the PLA and you were wanting to get this more smooth. So I mentioned that, you know, when you run your soldering iron across this, it kind of creates a bridge or a canal. What you can do is I recommend getting these two tips here for your soldering iron. One is kind of like a, looks like a razor blade and the other one is just kind of like a smooth end. And basically what you can do is um, 
keep it at a lower temperature. You don't need it super high. Um, and obviously you're not gonna hold it in your hand. It's gonna be on your soldering iron. Um, but you wanna keep it maybe in the mid twos, um, somewhere around there. And what you do is you just kind of drag it across here and it'll smooth all this out. It'll kind of push some of that into there. Now I'm gonna do um, some trial and error and, and test this out myself. I've tried it before on some pieces with flat pieces, it works really good. On curved ones, it's kind of hard because what you can end up have, what you can end up doing is flattening all this out, and then you still have to end up filling it in. But the idea is to kind of take this little, um, this little channel that kind of bows up, and just kind of smush that back down. So you can use this one; um, that's a good option. And you can also use, yes, that fell on the ground. <laughs> you can use one like this, which is just completely flat. And same thing, you can kind of go over the top and it can kind of push that down and smooth it out. Now, typically what I like to do is just sand this and it just kind of knocks it down and levels it. But, um, you know, it's not a bad idea to, um, to do this because you are putting more PLA in the weld, so to speak. So this isn't a bad option to do. I've done it before. I didn't really mention it um, in the first video, but I'm mentioning it now because, you know, you can always try. The great thing with this is if it doesn't work, it's not that big of a deal. You have to sand this and fill this in anyways. Um, so you can always try uh, those two tips and um, you can just get different soldering tips like on Amazon or eBay and stuff like that. But the, like I said, these are the two that I've used before and they work really good. So I just kind of wanted to share that little tip with you. Um, so, so if you guys do that, uh, make sure to leave me a comment and let me know how it did or didn't work out for you so we can give feedback to other viewers. Okay, so here we have just the small section of the Vader shield where we applied the plastic metal. And what I did is I sanded it with 120 grit by hand, didn't use a machine. Let me explain why. Um, if you really wanted to, all up here, you could easily use, uh, you know, like a palm sander, DA sander, something like that. Um, however, down here, uh, like I said, we've got this line and we don't want to beat this line up too much. And you can kind of even see how I didn't go too crazy with it. I sanded pretty efficiently, but um, you don't want to warp this line, so to speak. Uh, inevitably, what we'll have to do is just right in here, we're going to have to get some regular body filler uh, just to kind of reform this line. But you can see that the plastic metal did exactly what we wanted it to do, and that was fill in the majority of the channel there okay now there's really no reason to like fold the sandpaper uh, and knock this down because we're going to put body filler over it. 90 percent of that channel is filled with plastic metal that's the heavy duty stuff that's what we want and you can see that on the sides there's very little plastic metal this will actually all get sanded off once i actually go through and uh, i'm going to come over this and just do 220 um, so this will knock pretty much the majority of that off and then I'll put the body filler on which I'll obviously show you and explain that process and these are very these are minor these are perfect situation for body filler could you put plastic metal back over this absolutely so if you know if you don't want to um, you know chance it I guess However, in this crevice especially, it's going to be, and you can see how small it is just by the tip of my finger. This right here, it would be very hard to get this so smoothed out. So you're really better off putting some actual body filler in here and just sanding it very lightly. It'll reform this whole line. It'll come out perfect. So these are the type of openings that are absolutely perfect for body filler, okay? As I mentioned before, the reason why you want to be careful with body filler is because it is, in theory, it is a polyester resin with a cream hardener. And anytime you're adding a hardener to it, it shrinks to a certain degree. What's nice about this is it doesn't shrink. Um, there's always that chance that if you fill this larger gap in with body filler and it shrinks, and I'm sure it's happened to you, 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 get, a, you get a whole line, a whole, it's, it looks like a crack, but what it is is because it shrunk and it's separated from where those PLA is. Also, again, plastic metal is meant for things like this. It's meant to conjoin and fuse a little bit better. It has better conjoining agents in it. So plastic metal really is the best thing for durability, structural wise, 
and it has a reduced rate of shrinking. So it's not gonna shrink like a body filler. All right, so I kind of went through and uh, just sanded this all down a little bit with uh, some 220. Um, just got it just a little bit smoother, but not too smooth, uh, just in preparation to apply the body filler. So body filler. Um, so this is a similar product, just not quite as durable. Uh, and I'll explain it. I explained it in, in the little break session that we had there, but again, I'll just kind of reiterate. So this is basically um, a polyester resin and, and, and a hardener. The hardener is the catalyst. That's what creates the reaction that causes it to solidify, to go from this to two creams to something that's hard. What we want to do is, you can see we got the filler. We wanted, we don't need a lot. We, and that, that's one big misconception is people will use a ton of body filler and you don't need a lot because we're, we really only want to fill in these really little tiny areas. Now, like I said, for this line here, we may have to repeat this process to kind of reform it, but we don't really need a lot. I mean, that's maybe a quarter size amount of uh, filler. And then the hardener, it's pretty much a four to one, five to one ratio. Um, you don't need a lot because the more you add, the quicker it will harden. So if you want more playtime, um, don't put as much. You can see I put maybe a pea-sized drop. That's really all you need. And you want it to get somewhere to a pinkish to a off-reddish color. The color we have here is going to give us probably about... Uh, two minutes of playtime before it starts to harden. Of course, if you are in an area with humidity and things like that, uh, heat really, um, it's going to make things a little bit difficult. So, and it's kind of the same fashion that's going to apply. We want to kind of get it over the seam really good. Over the seam, you can apply a little bit of pressure just to work it in that seam and then kind of smooth it all out. We just kind of want to get it pretty smooth. I mean, obviously you're going to have to come through and sand all this. But chances are you'll have to do this twice. Once for like an initial layer, and then once to kind of get some of the areas you want to miss. So like I said, you're not going to use a lot, and you can actually see how I wasted a little bit there, and that it just kind of comes with the territory. That should be pretty good. Now, if you want to go along the edge where the seam isn't and kind of get some of this stuff off, it will save you from doing extra sanding. Wipe that off with my finger. So you can see that was probably two or three minutes and now it's gonna to start to harden. So what we're gonna do is we are going to let this harden. I'm gonna let it kind of chill out for about 20, 30 minutes. Uh, just cure and solidify. And we're gonna come back and we're gonna start hitting this with some 180 and some 220, basically the same process that we did before. We'll see how it looks. We'll see if we need to go over uh, another coat with the uh, body filler. If not, we can jump into um, doing the glazing putty. But we'll just let this dry. We'll come back here and see how it looks. All right, so uh, here is the helmet area where we are merging. And this is after putting the uh, body filler on, the standard body filler, not the plastic metal. Um, we put this over the plastic metal after we sanded it down. And it is a lot smoother, um, but it will need one more... Um, coat or layer here uh, just because you can see it's not so much these little tiny pinholes that you see there it's more or less um, when this got welded and it's kind of hard it's just raised a little bit so this right side here actually let me try to get it on the back side here you can probably see it a little bit better um, it ju there's just a little bit of a lip that, that's being created. So when we're doing this, I guess you could see a little bit better here. There's a little bit of a raise on the purple side. So this kind of dips down and this raises up. 
So that's why when we're sanding here, you're noticing there's more body filler right here. Because really what I'm doing is I'm taking the sandpaper and I'm just kind of going over it uh, basically with more of a, a curved feature. I'm actually using a wallet here and just kind of sanding over it and just leveling that off. Uh, you wouldn't want to use something straight because then that'll, that'll create a harsh line and it, you want something that's got contour and a little bit of a bend to it. What I'll do is I'll take like uh, some polishing pads, something that has some squish and I'll use it to sand like that. Now you could use, like I said, like a wallet or something like that. Um, I just had these out here right now. Um, when I do my finishing sand, I always use my old beat up wallet. It works really good. Um, in here, what I am doing, I'm, I'm actually just kind of freehanding it. I'm not really using a wallet or anything. I'm using the contour of my hand just to kind of stay along this line here and then along this line here, just to keep it very smooth. Inevitably, this whole line here, and even the grooves around this little mold here, are gonna get filled in a little bit because we're gonna use, obviously, um, you know, things like glazing putty and uh, filler primer. So uh, we just wanna try to keep the overall aesthetics and eccentricity of it. So you can kind of see how that line is still staying right here. And that's what we want. So obviously we'll touch it up a little bit more, but you really wouldn't want to take something and kind of like go like this because you could actually wear that down more. You want to try to avoid that line and just kind of sand right here and then flip it and kind of just sand right here. sanding and it is very 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 smooth now what I did is I only sanded the glazing putty with 320 grit which you can see right here extra fine at the 320 is ripped off but trust me when I say it's 320 um, but this stuff you when you do glazing putty you don't need to do um, you don't need to use a very heavy grit um, it's very light it comes off very easily and if you go too heavy you'll actually take all of it off and you'll pretty much have to redo exactly what you did so these whole areas are incredibly incredibly smooth um, I can still feel a little bit of the of the seam and essentially what will most likely happen is we'll have to get a couple layers of filler primer on there uh, to really kind of level it off and that's when I'll use that my little wallet technique and just kind of smooth all that up um, it's not a huge gap it's very mild here is almost completely flush it's just a little bit right here I could take glazing putty and go back over it, but at this point, um, it's probably about 90%. So we have to put some primer on here really to see where we're at. So the next step is just get some primer on here, see how well it lines up, see if we need to do any, any more. Um, but typically this is the, the process that I always do and it gets it nice and smooth. So at this point, we're gonna start putting some filler primer on and using a nice soft edge here and kind of blending um, all this together. So what we'll do is we're gonna put some Bondo filler primer on here and see how she looks. So all I did with this helmet was um, I came in, this of course was after glazing putty, um, I applied one coat of the Bondo filler primer. Uh, I did it moderately, not too heavy. I didn't film it because it's kind of boring. I just kind of explain how I do it. So uh, I applied it moderately, not heavy, but not light. Um, let it sit for about 20 minutes and then I did another coat. And then I came through and I hand sanded it with um, basically just some, some 320 grit sandpaper. Um, what I did though is I used a nice little sponge 
Um, I just kind of wrapped it around and just kind of generally sanded over it, uh, basically left to right, because you want to, that seam goes from left to right. You don't really want to go this way. You want to blend it in. You want that filler primer to build up. So we had a little bit of a divot. So we want to go basically left to right because we want to knock down what's high and leave what's low. We want to merge that bump together. And there's, I mean, there's no, I wish I could, I wish I had like something that I could zoom in super much. There's no, nothing. It's completely gone now. Completely filled in. You'd never know it was there. So, and I did that twice. So basically one coat, 20 minutes wait, another coat, 20 minutes wait, came in, sanded the whole thing with 320 and then 400, uh, all by hand, no machine. So then I wiped it all down and I just repeated that process. Did one coat weighted, another coat weighted, but then I did um, a little bit of 220 just on where that seam was and then 320 and 400 and boom. And the reason why I did the 220 is because I wanted to make sure that anything that was sticking up was leveled down. Um, now you can do that on the initial, um, but it looked pretty smooth. I just wanted to make sure for good measure. Again, you don't want to go super low going you know, back to 180. Um, like I have little scraps of 180 and stuff all over the place. Um, you don't want to go back that low because then you're going to take off that filler primer. You want to have the filler primer build up. So you want to go generally low. So really anything lower than 220, you're going to pretty much backtrack and you're going to have to almost start over. You're going to strip all that body or you're going to strip off all that filler primer um, and then have to start over. Again, we want, I'll, I'll reiterate this, the filler primer is to build up a little bit to, to get rid of these imperfections. You can see how smooth this is. You know, compared to over here, which has nothing. Even with the filler primer that's on here, you can see once you start sanding it, it smooths everything out. So this is a really, really, really smooth piece now. And you can see how I was able to keep that body line. And I did do that, um, you know, freehand. Um, basically, all I did was I just took some 320 right here, and I just very gently... I am really sorry about this sun. It's, <laughs> I wanted to use it to show that the seam was gone, but it's killing me. Um, I just contoured over this, the pattern, and then very gently went up and down and then did that with 400. And I used very, very small uh, pieces. Um, just folded it over a couple times, generally did it by hand um, just to get that natural curvature. But overall, um, like I said, this piece, you'd never know where that seam is. And that's basically how the, the proper steps in you know, filling these seams in to get them to get this whole helmet looking like one piece. So you go basically from that, and this lighting is really good. So you can see what I'm talking about now, how when you do that PLA weld, it makes that canal, that channel, and then you have to just sand all that down and then fill it in, but it leaves you with this. It's cool. you'd, you'd never know that that's another piece, that those are two pieces merged together. So obviously we have to do it for the whole rest of the helmet. But a quick little tutorial there, a good thorough explanation on why you should use certain things and, and why you shouldn't. So um, I'll give you my final thoughts on this and we'll wrap this thing up. All right, guys. Well, that is it. That is a wrap on the Vader Dome. I'm looking like the guy from Spaceballs. I'm going to take this off. I look ridiculous. Um, <laughs> but that is uh, that's pretty much it. That is a wrap uh, on PLA welding part two. I'm going to get out of the sun. This is absolute. What am I thinking? Trying to do this. Jesus. That, look at it. I'm like, like a glazed donut sweating in here. That's a wrap on PLA welding part two. Some tips and tricks on how to properly, uh, finish your merger. So after you have, um, you know, welded those pieces together, um, this is really the best way, um, you know, not only structurally but just process wise uh really how to use the, the the proper parts in proper steps to make sure that you have you know a solid base um and then you fill everything in with the proper as i call them components um hopefully that little explanation there uh that i gave between um the plastic metal uh the body filler and the glazing putty um you know, gave you a little bit of insight on when you should, when you should and shouldn't use them. Um, hopefully that gave you not just a little bit of insight on PLA welding, but maybe a little bit of tips on some uh, proper finishing. I will have a much more in-depth video. I know this one was pretty in-depth um, on proper sanding techniques. Um, again, kind of debunking some of the myths, but 
Again, I just wanted to touch on this because I had somebody ask and I really love it when people chime in on the channel and ask for a requested video. It kind of gets me pumped because I know that these videos are useful. So when someone comes across something and says, hey, can you do this? Um, that really kind of gets the motor going and lets me, lets me kick it into full gear. It delays all my other videos and my projects, but it's okay because these videos are for you guys and that's really all that matters. So hopefully this video helps you. Uh, if it has, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any questions on the process, uh, leave me a comment. I will leave um, links in the description of all the products I use. I'll leave all the links in there. Uh, again, if you have a comment, let me know. Uh, if you are a subscriber to the channel, thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys watching for all these videos. If you're not, Click that subscribe button. Much more videos like this in the future. I'm going to get out of here, guys. It's way too hot in this shed. I'm sweating. I'm going to go inside, cool off, start my next project. But uh, yeah, thanks for viewing, guys, and we'll see you next time. Later.